We've got 80s music royalty in the studio now. He sold over 30 million albums during his 40-year career and now Mark Armand is back with a brand new album. He'll be telling us all about that in just a moment, but first, here's a look back at some of his era-defining hits. And oh. Mark joins us now. How lovely to see you. Have you enjoyed the pig? Too. I did. What a beautiful article that was. What a great <laughs> creature as well. Yeah. It was absolutely fantastic. I think pigs are amazing animals. And yeah. I think it was right what the lady was saying, to, to respect respect pigs. Yeah. yeah. They're really, really, really brilliant. All animals, yeah. yeah um, and sure. you say you still feel like a teenager at 62. I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I do actually. I mean, I, every time I, I every time I, I, I do a new record, I always think it's the first record I've ever made. Really? And I always, I always approach it like that because it's exciting. It's that I've made thirty odd albums in forty years, and every time I make an album, I think, oh, it's so exciting! I make another record. Yeah. It's brilliant. So, I, and I do have that kind of. I still, it's always important to hold on to your your child inside. I think, and always, always be excited about but making. Think, new things. things, but I, I guess it has changed though over the years. I mean, over those sort of 30 albums, the music has changed and it has developed. What yeah. you're saying has changed. I mean, there's a lot of references to mortality in this and nature, which seems to be a really big part of your life now. Yeah, I think I wrote a couple of buzzwords when I did, did this album. I wrote pagan pop and um, apocalyptic romance. I mean, loving <laughs> all of that. <laughs> and so I, I think, you know, whenever you make a record, you look at where you are in the world, you look at your, your age and where you are in your life and where you are in the world. And I think we live in a pretty chaotic world at the moment yeah. and I think it's with one thing with environmental things with politics and everything mm -hmm. else so you kind of look at looking at myself as a person getting older and person looking towards mortality without sounding kind of gloomy or mm. anything you do look at your place and you feel we're in a kind of an autumnal place in the world I yeah. think as opposed to not, as well as an autumnal place in my life and I love autumn but I think you know we, we don't want we don't, we don't want to get to winter uh, um, so it's and, and so we um, I, I think but it's, it's also a great time for it feels like that time of change mm. ha happening and with the, with the album as well as kind of looking at things like endings and um, mortality there's also about new beginnings and about new things well the single the single happening. is positive isn't it I mean yeah, the, it's very the, positive. The, the album has many messages but the single is a particularly light one yeah it's a, it's a thing whatever I mean this is the second album I've made with um, songwriter producer Chris Braid and and I love working with Chris because he has a great pop sensibility. Mm. So I, I never want to lose that. So I like working with that pop sensibility and still love making pop records. And he also has a great musicality as well. So with the Chaos and the Dancing Star, it's got a great mix of that musicality mm. and pop mm. as well, which is a great mix for yeah, me. I think we can have a listen. Well, you're at the Royal Festival Hall on, uh, on with Monday. Chris, this, this, this yeah. the, it's the first concert that we've ever, ever done t t together. We've recorded quite a few um, things now together, a couple of albums, Velvet Trail and this one, but it's the first time we've actually done a concert together, so it's very exciting. Yeah. But there's no question that that audience are going to arrive and they're going yeah. to want Tainted Love. And, and what's wrong with that? I think that's uh, great. You know, I, I'm, I'm all, all, always happy to do that. I think, I think the Tainted Love, it's like a theme song, mm -hmm. really. Uh, that's the way I look at it. So when people hear, like, the, 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 um, the theme of this morning, they're in the other room and they come in and they sit down to, yeah. to watch the programme and you can offer them lots of different things and exciting things and new things. So Tainted Love, it's, it's like a theme... It's like, come on in with the theme song mm -hmm. and sit down and there's lots of other interesting well, things going on Well, you were on Top of the Pops, well. weren't you? And you, I think Top of the Pops was where it all broke. I think it was actually... I, in first, this studio. studio. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I just said that as I was coming in, I thought, I think the last time I, I was in the studio was to do Top of the Pops, and the first ever appearance I did on Top of the Pops was in this studio. This, look at this, look at I mean, this. Oh, my God, that was in here. here. That was here. Oh, I wish that, I felt like we should reenact this moment one day <laughs> and just recreate it. I'd love that. You could, yeah. be, you could be in the background, I'd be in the front row. We should. <laughs> my head's gone. <laughs> really Recreated Top of the Pops moments, yeah. yeah. I think. Um, the music for you playing it, because sort of getting into music in the first place from being a, you know a young kid yeah. growing up and it was it was sort of your refuge in a way it was a way that you escaped from life a little bit um it's almost like your biography of life as you're performing it so to go back and revisit those songs do they take you back to certain places in your life they do but i think you have to when, with the song like Tainted Love and Sailor Wave Goodbye for example i'm, I'm lucky to have songs like that because mm. they've, they've taken on a life of their own over the years and whenever I, I play them I'm very respectful to the fact that people have had great memories with those songs they've grown up had their first romance their first love affair when even when they were at school should I say you know they've 
that they're growing up through, yeah. through those songs. So I think you've always got to respect that and, and give them back to people. So even if, if I do lots of new songs from the new album, Chaos and a Dancing Star, I'm still... I always say, well, here's some other things as well, because you, thank you for listening to all, all my new songs and um, here's some songs that you, yeah. that, that you like uh, as well. You can't be in the business um, and have the pedigree that, uh, that you have had without, you know, without there being extraordinary moments. Did, did Madonna turn <laughs> down staying at your flat? Well, see, well, it was a strange thing, because, my, because Madonna actually played at my 22nd birthday. <laughs> well, well, it was in 1982, so I think I probably may, I might have been in my late teens or something. I don't know. But she actually played at my birthday party back in the early 80s in a club in New York. Um, we'd been signed to Sire Records by um, Seymour Stein, the legendary m music um, figure, and he'd also signed Madonna. And he said, "I was at my party. And he said, I've got this girl doing a performance tonight. You know, say hello to her.' So I said hello to this this girl. She's called Madonna, no and she's way. it's her first time. She's she, she's um she, she's one of her first performances. So she. Actually played at one of my. And did you know then that? Could you tell she had that something? Well, I could tell. Yeah, you could tell that she had something amazing. That 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 special. And something. Were you in Earl's Court? Uh, I, I was. I had a little escape place in Earl's Court. I used to go and like to write acts. I, I never wanted to get to lose touch of my my bedsit roots. So even though I had a, a, a fl flat of my own, I had this little secret getaway place to go and write, and when no one knew where I was and they couldn't bother me. And I was friends with her designer at the time, Martin Burgoyne. And, um, and Martin said to me, oh, well, Donna's coming to London to do a promo thing. And the, and the, the record company won't pay for a hotel for us. That's how long yeah. ago it was. And yeah. so, can we stay at your little flat? And I said, mm, I said, you can if you want to. I said, but I warn you. So I think they did actually turn up at the flat. I, I, I was away at the time and they turned up at the flat and they thought, no. <laughs> no. No, oh, I think, no, I think anywhere will be better than this. So, um, it's so, so lovely to see you, uh, Mark. So, um, so here we go. This is uh, this is the album, uh, Chaos and the Dance, uh, Dancing Star. Uh, yeah. that, that obviously, no, there's that straightforward. Okay, so that's straightforward. I look at that vinyl. However, I mean, you don't however, get that on stream. Hold on a second. Depending on which one you buy, I don't. I mean, the uh, colour of that. There's that. You could get an orange one, or oh. you could Just get the blue one. I want yeah. orange. Do you? Yeah, I like the orange. On oh, the blue one. Look at yeah, that. There you go. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen one of those. No, you don't get that with streaming and down. You, you don't, do you? Do you? No, Absolutely. It's a good you don't um, get that. It's always lovely Thank to you. Thank you. The Festival Hall on Monday yep. with Chris Braid. Chaos and Thanks to Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.